The newest Unearthed Arcana is still fresh off the press, so I've decided to merge it into this week's Mechanics Monday's Tuesday edition video. The mechanical flexibility and fluidity of racial ability score bonuses introduced in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything is now a standard for all new races. These multiverse wanderers are no different and can therefore be used for whatever class you deem them so. Their other traits can still make them slightly better with certain subclasses, so buckle up, engage the booster buttons down below and let's jam across the vast YouTube algorithm multiverse together with 6 new playtest races. Astral Elves attempting to get closer to their deities have become a little bit like Asimars, the standard set of traits all elves share, dark vision, kin senses and trance, are all still there. Fey ancestry however is slightly different, unlike the rest of their kin, these astral dwellers apparently can be put to sleep magically because that wording is not presented here. The advantage against charms is still more useful in most cases, but this nerf may be for a good reason though. Radiant soul is by far the most potent new trait, just one successful death saving throw brings you back into the fray. This is especially relevant at very low levels where a sudden surge of 5 or 6 extra hit points after getting knocked down to 0 can often make a difference between losing and winning a fight. Even at higher levels, bringing yourself up frees the rest of the party to keep fighting instead of trying to keep you alive. Unless, of course, you are ridiculously unlucky and fail 3 death saves in a row without somebody stabilizing you beforehand. I've actually actually recently seen that happen during actual play, everybody was just failing all the medicine checks and death saving throws, so it's definitely possible, though obviously clearly kinda unlikely, right? Trans proficiencies will probably come in handy for both combat or flavor, roleplay oriented characters, or maybe both, since you can mix the two proficiencies to your own liking. You can even decide to be in constant chaotic flux, always changing your proficiencies after every long rest. Bonus points if you let the decide what proficiencies you get. The constant tinkering of gnomes sometimes results in their mechanical clockwork creations going rogue. These are, you know, so-called autonomes. To my knowledge, this is the first time in 5th edition that we are getting an actual construct as a playable race. Warforged got close, but they still ended up being humanoid. The main issue with constructs in general is that they aren't able to get healed or stabilized with spells like Cure Wounds, Healing Word and Spare the Dying. Crawford and Perkins decided to make these gnomes able to be affected by such spells because they have true life. Moreover, they can also use their hit dice to regain hit points after somebody finishes casting mending and trip on them. I mean, this kinda makes sense, right? The rest of the traits make up for a true powerhouse in a small form factor. High armor class via armor casing is superior at low levels and even at higher levels all mages who rely on mage armor for example for their high armor class basically get it for free just by the virtue of being this type of character. Mechanical nature is somewhat similar to constructed resilience of Warforged, but I would even dare and say it's better because as far as I'm concerned, advantage on saves against paralysis is better than immunity to magic sleep. Sentry's rest is borrowed from Warforged as well, though the wording is slightly different, I'm not sure why exactly, they appear to be effectively the same traits. GIFs or GIFs have been officially added to 5th edition a while ago as part part of Mordekain and Stone of Foes. For hippo looking humanoids, they seem a bit too bare bones to me mechanically. Damage dealer is good on low levels when you don't roll a lot of damage dice anyway, but it scales poorly the higher you go and the more dice you roll. It also forces you into a melee roll, but you get nothing to protect you from harm in exchange, I mean, no armor class improvement, no advantage on any saving throws or whatsoever. Compared to goblins and asimars who also have other useful traits on top, the extra damage they get, a buff would be very welcome to this kind of trait. Also hippos are known to have a tough skin, similar to elephants, so a trait like Loxodon's natural armor makes sense to me here, especially seeing how this is supposedly melee specialist. It may even be part of the hippo build trait, which is nice and thematic, but mechanically often not that relevant as dexterity, wisdom and constitution saving throws usually pose the biggest threat to any adventurer out there. Strength saving throws and ability checks, sure they come up, but they're usually not 
that much of a problem. Hadoses are a stark contrast to GIFs or GIFs. I don't even know how it's pronounced. I mean, even they don't agree between themselves. These apish humanoids have dexterous feet, able to wrangle multiple objects simultaneously. Depending on your gear and environment you're in, this can be situationally super useful, similar to Thief Rogue's fast hands feature. However, glide trait is their biggest strength. As long as you have a reaction, no matter the height, you take zero falling damage and can cover quite a distance as you're falling down to safety. This is superior to even Ravnica's Simic hybrid, who can only negate falling damage from up to 100 feet high and don't really fly down as far as Hadoses do when they are gliding down. I feel like there could be another trait in there or something flavorful that, you know, gives Hadoses proficiency maybe in acrobatics skill or just something like that, but they are passable even in their current form as far as I'm concerned. Then we get to the weirdest one of the bunch. Plasmoids are literally oozes and if you are into exotics like this, you actually get quite a lot in return in terms of mechanics. Amorphous allows you to reach a lot of places and slip out of grapples easily. You have dark vision, you can hold breath for a full hour, you have natural resilience against acid and poison and have even a limited ability to shape yourself in order to get limbs and humanoid looking body parts. If I had to choose just one race from this unearthed arcana, it would be this one because the jokes and memes would literally write themselves. Last but not least, three Kreen are now playable too. I'm noticing inconsistency between the monster manual entry which lists them as humanoids and this playtest iteration which lists them as monstrosities. I'm not a lore guy but they are basically insectoids with the general humanoid shape so I wouldn't have a problem with them being considered humanoids especially since again Warforged are considered humanoids as well. Mechanically you get quite a lot. Chameleon Carapace gives the same high armor class as Autonomes with a stealth buff on top. Dark Vision is something I always value a lot. Secondary arms lend themselves perfectly for sword mages who have to wrangle shields, weapons and spellcasting components all at the same time. Sleepless revitalization makes three creens the perfect guards as they can watch out for danger while everybody else is sleeping. You can even alert your companions silently with your three creen telepathy, which is more powerful than most other similar abilities possessed by other psionic races. These insectoids and the astral elves strike me as mechanically the most stacked duo in this unearthed arcana. Plasmoid is definitely the most interesting one thematically. Autonomes seem fun as well and they are okay mechanically. Hadoses could be fleshed out a little bit more, while GIFs or GIFs, I mean, I don't even know how it's pronounced again, are in need of a serious buff compared to the rest of the gang. Wizards of the Coast are clearly hard at work expanding the official materials into other worlds and planes of existence. The recent official releases have already established that trend and it seems like it's going to continue into 2022 and beyond. The trend of non-humanoid races continues as well. We had a slow rollout at first with fey races such as satyrs and centaurs. Now we get even more exotic non-humanoid creature types. I like the general direction and hopefully we get more variety like this in the future releases. But those are topics I may talk more about in other videos. In the meantime, glide the Hadozi over the like button, send the plasmoid to engulf the subscribe and put three cream on notification bell guard duty. Mysterious are the ways of the YouTube algorithm and these exotic adventurers are probably the best equipped for dealing with it. The script for this video is available for download on my Patreon page under the Fireball tier. It's not mandatory, it's 100% optional, especially since I basically just read it out loud for you. But if you find the Patreon perks worth the trouble, worth your time and worth your money, chuck a few bucks my way over there. Special shout out to all of my current patrons, thank you for your continued support. I'll ramp up the new content soon, it's way overdue, I know. With everything said and done, Minmax Munchkin out and uh, talk to you soon.